when you finish your graphs, this is what your final product on the graph should look like. Okay, so this video is being put together so that uh, we can show how to make a uh, graphs, uh, a graph or graphs uh, from uh, using Google Sheets. So um, this is basically what you guys are going to do. Let me show you what the final product should kind of look like based on your data. Okay, so um, what I have over here is the data. Uh, right here, it's volume and pressure. You got this from your lab. Um, you're gonna eventually put one over volume because you're gonna make two graphs. You're gonna make graphs of pressure, uh, graph of pressure versus volume of the gas, and then pressure versus the inverse of volume of the graph. Right? And so if we kind of move this around a little bit. Uh, we'll see that, let's see, um, right here we have the <clears throat> graph of pressure versus volume. Pressure is on the uh, y-axis and volume is on the x-axis. And uh, every good graph should have uh, the, the ac both axes labeled with the quantity that's being measured and the units that are used. So on the y-axis here we have pressure in kilopascals. That was the units that were used to measure the pressure. And on the x-axis is volume uh, and milliliters in the, uh, um, uh, are the units. And so I put that in parentheses here also. Um, and so we got our graph here. And on the uh, title, you basically put it as y versus x. Whatever is being on the, uh, measured on the y-axis versus whatever is being measured on the x-axis. So we got pressure on the y-axis volume in the x-axis, so we can put as pressure versus volume. If you want to get more specific about, you know, what pressure, what volume, you can go ahead and do it. I could have just put uh, pressure versus volume of air or of a sample of a gas or a sample of air. Um, really, that's kind of up to you. That's kind of the creative part, I guess. Uh, but as long as you got the y versus x in there. Then this is the, um, this is the graph of pressure versus one over volume. And so you can do that also. Uh, you'll be, you will be doing that also. So let me go ahead and uh, uh, I'm going to break this down into uh, different parts of the video to show you kind of how you would get the first graph, how you uh, edit the the axes, uh, how you get the line, all that stuff, uh, one graph at a time. Okay, so uh, let's get going on that. How to make a graph of pressure versus volume. Okay, so um, we're going to start off by opening up the program. You go ahead and go to the Google Waffle. Since we have Google Suite available to us, that's why we're doing Google Sheets. You click on the Google Waffle. You click on Sheets. You need to be logged in in order to be able to have access to Sheets. So uh, when you open Google Sheets, it'll say start a new spreadsheet. And so you're going to click on blank. Spreadsheets are the types of programs. And when you open it up, you're going to see that you've got uh, basically a whole bunch of what we call cells. There's columns intersected by rows. And so all the columns are named by the letter, by a, by a letter. And all the rows are identified by a number. So each intersection or each little block is called a cell. So right here, I am in this cell right here. This is cell D6. Why? Because it's in column D and it's in the sixth row. You can actually see that in the upper left corner that you have D6 right there. So if you ever wanna like look, what cell address is this? That we call it, by the way, we call this an address. Um, you just look up here in the corner D6, or you can just see what row and what, no, uh, I'm sorry, what column and what row. And you'll notice that they're kind of a little darker than the others, the ones that are activated. Uh, and we're gonna be using those, uh, those, uh, what do you call it, uh, addresses uh, in the future. So uh, it's good to know how to use them. So once you have this blank sheet, you put your data in it. And in order to uh, save time, what I did is I went ahead and I already had it populated with my data, right? So you'll recall that we had that Boyle's Law uh, kind of syringe uh, along with a gas pressure sensor and you put it to five milliliters and the um, CBL 
read the pressure. Then you put it to six milliliters and read the pressure, eight milliliters, read the pressure, et cetera, and so on. So for each cell, just go ahead and make a column of the volumes and input the pressures, right? So these guys were the X and the Y on each one of those points that you had when you uh, got your, your, your information, your data from the calculator, okay? So this is what we're gonna graph. The first thing we're gonna do is show how to make a graph of pressure versus volume, okay? So as long as you have this, you're, you're, you've started off well. Put all your information into the, uh, into the cells in columns. Now we wanna go ahead and start up a graph. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit insert. And in Google Sheets, and also I guess Microsoft Excel, which is the Microsoft version of Google Sheets, probably the older one, um, there's chart. So you can click on chart and it'll start a new chart. What it's probably going to do is it's gonna to try to guess what you want it to do. And here it guessed correctly. I think I brought this up in class the other day. But here it guessed correctly. It guessed that I wanted to go ahead and um, I wanted to uh, graph the volume data that I had with the um, oops, with, with the um, pressure data. Okay. So let's see. So I need to move some things around here so we can see things. Whoops, went too far. All right. So um, here's my data. Here's my X and here's my Y. Now let's say that it didn't come up. Let's say that uh, you kind of, um, uh, you, you, you asked for a chart and it didn't guess correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to remove all the data. Remove all cities, okay. And so there's no data. Okay. First thing you gotta do if you don't have any data here, is you gotta go and select the correct chart type. Okay. There's all kinds of different chart types. Uh, there are line charts, area charts, column charts, bar charts, pie charts, all kinds of other stuff. Um, we're gonna use what's called the scatter plot. So let's go ahead and find the scatter. Uh, right here, scatter plot. One thing to note, and I think I mentioned this in class, but stay away from the line chart. The big problem with the line chart is that it does not it does not put your x data in appropriate uh, place. Basically, it treats the x your x data your x values as categories. It doesn't treat them as numbers. So here we got five, six, eight, ten, twelve, etc. Right? Notice that they're kind of closely spaced, but um, not really evenly spaced. Right? From five to six is just one difference. Six to eight is two. Eight to ten is two. Uh, 12 to 15 is three, right? So there, there's a difference. Um, line charts put everything like evenly spaced. So let's say we just had five, six, and 20, all right? Three points with X values, five, six, and 20. A line chart would put five next to, uh, uh, five next to six, right next to 20. Right? It would evenly space five, six, and 20. Okay. Um, your scatter plot is going to put five and six right next to each other, and then twenty way over here where it belongs, right? Because twenty is not next to five and six. So ask the first thing to do is ask for on chart type, ask for or look for a scatter plot okay. that puts the x values correct. Um, let's get rid of having headers here. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go where it says X axis right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on here. See this little waffle. It'll bring up a dialog box that'll, that'll allow you to select your data range. So we want data range. We want all these numbers right here to be, um, on your, uh, your X values. So you click okay. okay. So now it's got your the X values to be cells B6 to B14, right? This is B6 all the way down to B14. Okay. Then you're going to go down for the Y values. You're going to click on series. Okay. They don't call them Y axis, right? They call it this X axis, but they don't call it Y axis. And the reason why they don't, I, I don't know why they don't call it Y axis. They call it series. Uh, I think it's because, um, I don't know, you can do more than one. You can graph more than one thing. So uh, I'm going to click on this right here. And same thing, this little, Waffle here is to select the data range. 
and then you can go ahead and you can highlight all the ones you want on Y axis. Though so that's C6 to C14. See how it says sheet one here? Um, it puts that automatically to show it's on the sheet. You can have several sheets actually at one point in time. And then sometimes you might have a formula that refers to a cell in another sheet. Um, so that's why they're specific about it. But you don't have to worry about it because we're only wor working with one sheet. So when I click OK, you'll see that all my points have uh, gotten here. Um, now, one thing to note, I was having a problem with this in class. I finally figured out what the problem was. Sometimes uh, it'll click on this use row four as headers. Um, I think they were talking about like this right here. Um, and when when I did that, it like a few of the numbers disappeared, uh, data point. So make sure that this is not clicked. Okay, that way all our points are like five and 188 is right there. A six and 154 is right there. Eight and 116 is there, et cetera, and so on, okay? So that's how you get your points on your, your data. All you have to do is go to the X axis and series here. By the way, that is in the setup. So this is the chart editor. Well, I think I missed talking about that, but let me talk about that now. The chart editor, if I click away from the chart, disappears. It's got all the little details on the chart here or, or your graph. So if I, if I want it back, I will select the graph the, that I want under the chart. And then I'll double click and it brings up the chart editor. And I'm sure there's another way that you can do it over here, but that's the way I've kind of, I've found it. So this is the chart editor. There's two parts to it. You're going to use both parts, the setup and the customize. The setup is where we get the X and Y axis. You, that's where you tell the program, all right, this, this is what I want on my X axis. This is what I want on my Y axis. We just did that. Okay. And that's pretty much all we need at this point in time for setup. So your chart type, and then define the uh, x-axis values, define the y-axis val axis values on series. Okay. Make sure that this is not clicked on, I guess this one's okay. Let me get rid of this one. Oh yeah, no. let's go ahead and keep that clicked on. Okay. All right, now we wanna go ahead and um, we want to uh, label properly our axes and we, we wanna put a, um, a, uh, a title to this. So we're going to go to customize. And when you hit customize, there's a bunch of little different uh, menus down below it. Uh, you know, you can, you can change all kinds of stuff. Um, we can change the chart style still here. Uh, the chart and axis titles, which we're going to do. Um, uh, you can also change some things about the series and the legend, which we don't have one right now. Um, and some of the things on the axes and the grid lines. Um, this is all we're going to do. Okay, so chart act and axis titles. You can change the chart title here. You can change the chart subtitle, the horizontal axis, and the vertical axis. In other words, the horizontal axis is the x-axis. The vertical axis is the y-axis. So let's start with that. I'm going to go ahead and do the horizontal axis first. Okay. Um, what I want to put on, on uh, the x-axis is that we measured volume. So I'm going to put down that what's on here is oops, volume. And I measured it in milliliters. Don't forget to put your units because if you just put volume, I don't know if you measured this and these numbers refer to gallons or ounces or liters or milliliters. So you want to put volume as the quantity that got measured and milliliters were the units. Okay. That's all you got to do to put your uh, X axis uh, title in. Now let's go to the vertical axis, which is the Y axis. Right now we got KPA in there because that's what it guessed, I guess. But we want to go ahead and say that that's pressure. So we're going to put that. We've got pressure being measured there. And the units are kPa, kilopascals. And see, now you can see that on the y-axis. you got pressure in kPa. And then once you're done with that, you can go up to the actual chart title. So you're still clicking on this right here under chart and axis titles. If it didn't come up, you click on the little caret. And then this would open this up. So we got the horizontal axis taken care of. We got the vertical axis taken care of. Next thing to do, we need a chart title. And basically what we're measuring here is pressure against volume, right? So this is where we would go ahead and put pressure versus volume of a gas or a sample of air or whatever you want. 
and that goes over here. We can even go ahead and I like centering my title. So we can go down below here and align it uh, by centering it. Okay, and that, that's where that goes. Okay, so this is how you get your pressure versus volume graph. Okay, and you learn some of the basics here of how to define uh, what's on the X axis, what's on the Y axis in the setup menu, and then how to go ahead and uh, label your axes on the customize menu. Okay. All right. That's step one. Now we'll look, we'll go on to how we make the second graph of pressure versus one over volume, how to use a formula in a Google sheet cell and copy it down to other cells. So you can calculate one divided by volume. Okay, so now we have our graph of pressure versus volume of a gas, right? And this is this shows a nice inverse relationship between the uh, pressure and uh, <clears throat> volume. Uh, the next thing we want is a graph of pressure versus one divided by the volume. So what I'm going to do is I can, I'm going to move this out of the way. So I'll move it over, you can move it down, or I'm just going to move it to the right here. I'm going to put a second graph right here. Before I do, I need... Well, I need one divided by the volume. So I'm gonna, we're going to take each one of these numbers and take one and divide it by that. Now, I'm going to show you guys how to use the uh, formula function of Google Sheets, which is very handy. Um, and when you have a lot of calculations to do, you can get it to do it, it, it for you. Right? So we're going to make a column of one divided by volume. Okay. And the units are going to be in. Let me go ahead and put that here one over milliliters and what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to put in one divided by five but i'm not going to go ahead and do it myself i'm going to let the um the the uh, spreadsheet do it the spreadsheet uh, will do it on its own um the, whenever you want a formula to to work what you do is you hit the equal button and when you hit equal it's going to, it's telling this spreadsheet program, oh, I've got a formula, be ready, I've got a formula coming. Okay. And right here, it kind of tried to guess what I wanted and it didn't guess right, because it thinks that I want to take B6 and divide it by C6. That's not what I want. I want one divided by what's in this formula here, B6. So you notice I'm going to put one divided by B6. Some, some people go, why don't you just go one divided by five? You're going to see why in just a minute. Um, if I did one divided by five, I'd have to go ahead and uh, do it to all these all the way down. I don't want to do that. I've, there's a quicker way of doing this. Watch. So if I took in the formula, you can see right here, equals one divided by B6. The B6 in yellow means that we are referring to the cell B6. And if I hit enter, it gives me the answer. Right, let me get rid of this here. It gives me the answer. 0.2. 1 divided by 5 is 0.2. So that is correct. I mean, you may have seen that other things filled in below here. Um, but let's say they did. Sometimes this, these programs will ask you, is, is this what you want to do? Like I tried to guess that I wanted to take B6 divided by C6. Uh, that's not what I want to do. Sometimes it guesses right. Sometimes it doesn't. This time it actually guessed right. Uh, but I want to show you how to do it on your own. Right? So I have this formula 1 over uh, B6. If I had put down 1 over 5, then I'd have to go ahead and, and go down to this formula here and say equals 1 over 6. This one equals 1 over 8, equals 1 over 10, et cetera, and so on, all the way down to 1 equals 1 over 20. I could have done that. But a much faster way of doing this is just copying the formula all the way down. So see this little box right here? When I go ahead and take my cursor and hover over the little box, there's like a little turns into a little plus. And if I go ahead and grab it, I click and then pull down. Basically what it's doing is it's taking the formula I put in cell D6 that gave me the 0.2 and it's copying it, but it's not copying it exactly. It's going ahead and doing what's called a relative reference. Whereas this one right here, the formula, and you can see up here, this is called the formula bar. It shows you what's in here. So the result is 0.2, but the formula is 1 over B6. That's what I put in there originally. If I go ahead and move my cursor down to B7, 
you'll notice that it says here one divided by B7. And if I move it a, another cell down, it says one divided by B8. So notice that it copied my formula, but since I copied it down, it changed the, um, the row number by one. And once again, that's called a relative reference. Okay, so um, all I had to do was put the formula up here, one divided by B6. Then I copied everything all the way down and it copied. Now I got one over one divided by B7 here, one divided by B8 here, one divided by B9, one divided by B10, one divided by B11, one divided by B12, one divided by B13, and one divided by B14. Okay, that's one of the wonderful things of spreadsheets is that you can go ahead and take a whole bunch of numbers. You have to do calculations. And if you have to do the same calculation over and over and over again, just with different numbers, you can go ahead and take the formula, copy it and paste, paste it all the way down. And it does them all for you. Okay. Um, so that's how we get our one over volume that we're going to, this will now be the new X values or the new X data in our uh, second chart, right? We want to, we want to um, graph pressure versus one over volume. Now, one other thing you might see here is that uh, all these are, you know, got all kinds of different digits. If you want to format that so that they all look the same, you can go ahead and highlight them all go up to format actually you know what you can do you can actually go ahead and uh there's decrease and increase decimal places and you can go ahead and and you know click on them here and it'll give you more decimal places rounding to more decimal places they'll be rounded to the same number of decimal places so you can just kind of decide how many decimal places do i want let's keep it at three for this okay so um now we have our data in three decimal places and we have all our values for each one of these uh, points that we've got now, but now we've got the inverse of volume for each of the uh, data points. Now we're going to go ahead and graph this. How to create a graph of pressure versus the inverse of volume or one divided by the volume. Okay. So now that we have our, um, our, our one over volume, which is going to be our X data for our second graph. Now we can go ahead and make the second graph or chart. And it's basically the same as we did before, um, but we're going to have to do a few extra things. Let's go ahead and do it. Okay. So once again, we want a new graph. We got our old graph over here on the right, so that you know it's still there, but we're going to do a new graph. So we're going to insert a chart. Once again, go to insert, go to chart. And once again, it makes a, a guess. And this time it's a poor guess. It's exactly not not really what we want. So we're going to go up to setup and um, let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to move this out of the way here so we can see. Um, let's go ahead and go to X axis and remove and notice that it says uh, series. I removed all series. So get rid of the, any X axis, anything that was put up for X axis, get rid of anything from series, get rid of this uh, use row for as headers. Let's go ahead and go to X axis here and um, select the data range. Once again, do the little waffle. What we're going to use is we're going to use, oops, um, use the data here. Hold on, let me go ahead, move this around here. You can't see the data, that's data. That's the problem. Okay, got it. All right, so once again, I clicked off of it, uh, click back on, double click on, on the chart to get your chart editor to back up. We're on setup. We have a scatter chart uh, for X axis data. We're going to want the one over volume, right? The rows uh, cells D six through D 14 to highlight all those. Those will be our X axis X values and the series or the Y values. We click on that, go to uh, select data range and that's going to be our pressure. And so we're going to highlight all the pressure numbers. Just like we did in the first one, except we have different uh, X data here. Click OK. And there is our graph. That's what our graph is going to look like more. Move this over a little bit. Now that we have the graph uh, on the setup, um, and notice that it's much more linear, close to being on the line. We'll do just like we did in the other ones. We're going to go ahead and put what is on the X uh, axis, what's on the Y axis and what is the title. So remember, you recall that this one 
on the horizontal axis is the one divided by volume. And so our units are one, oops, one divided by, one divided by milliliters. And so that's what's on our X axis. On our vertical axis or Y axis is pressure in kilopascals. And because I've done it already before, it remembers that I put it in, so I can just go ahead, use it as a choice, or just type it in. Pressure, once again, the units go in parentheses, kilopascals. Um, in order to get full credit on these, you have to have the um, axes labeled, including the quantity and the um, units. And then at the top, we can go ahead and go to chart title. You can put a subtitle if you want. I hardly ever use them. And uh, it guessed that we wanted KP and uh, 1 over ML. Nope, that's not it. We have pressure versus 1 divided by volume of a gas. Okay. And as I said before, I like having my titles centered. That's, I guess, a choice you might have. So you'll notice that we have our graph here. Our x-axis is labeled, our y-axis is labeled, we have a title, and so there's our graph, okay? So uh, we're not done yet, but uh, we got some of the essentials in here. We're gonna do a couple things with this graph, uh, including adding a best fit line, uh, calculating the slope, and checking to see if this thing goes uh, through or almost through the origin. So let's go ahead and do that now. next. How to add a trend line, display the equation of the line for the trend line, and increase the range on the x-axis so you can see the origin. Okay, the last thing we need to do is put a line through our points. We want the best fit line, and there's a way of doing this. So if you go to Customize over here on the chart editor, go to Customize, and let's go ahead and close up the charts and axis titles. We're going to go over here where it says Series. And we're going to click on that to open up the series, um, customize, because we're customizing something from the series. Um, so you're going to scroll down until you get near the bottom, and there's this box here that says trend line. A trend line is a line that has been calculated to be the best line that fits through here. It's a statistical calculation. If you take a statistics class, um, they'll have you put in all the points into this formula, and they'll say, all right, the, the best line through this is uh, got a slope of whatever and a y-intercept of whatever. So uh, you can use the slope and intercept form to figure out the, the line. So you click on trend line and that draws the, uh, the best fit line through all your points. Um, so there it is. Not only can you do that, you can actually get the slope, uh, the, the, the equation of this line. And so you'll recall that um, when we're talking about how Boyle came up with his equation, he graphed pressure versus one over volume, and he was able to go ahead and get a straight line, and the slope was constant, pressure times volume. Um, so what you can do is you can go down here, go down below trend line, and go over here where it says label, and uh, click here it says none. Click on that, and then use equation. So you click on use equation, you get the equation of the line. Now it doesn't say why, this is a, the blue dot. So the Y on the blue dot series here is equal to MX plus B. So your your your, your uh, slope, your M is 931 X plus your Y intercept is 1.25. It really should be zero, but um, you know, this is actual raw data. So sometimes you get a little bit off, but it's only like, I mean, we're talking about kilopascals. 1.25 kilopascals is really not much off of being close to zero. So there's your y intercept. Uh, I mean, so that's, there's your uh, equation of the line that you can get from here. Also, um, we said that this was supposed to go through the origin. It doesn't look like it's going through the origin, right? But the reason for that is because look at this. The the um, the uh, x-axis doesn't begin at zero. It begins at 0 0.05. So if we wanted to change the x-axis and make sure that it goes all the way down to zero, so it starts at zero, then what we do is this. We go ahead and, I don't think you have to close it, but I'm gonna close up the series here. 
go down to horizontal axis and in horizontal axis you could tell you could tell it where to start see there's minimum and maximum where to begin what's the minimum value and where to end what's the maximum value so if i wanted to make it you know a, a bigger range i could i'm just going to go ahead and put a zero for minimum and what that does is that says that i'm your x values are going to start at zero and look the line goes basically just about two zero zero the origin so our data is following right along robert Boyle's data okay and uh that's pretty much it if you don't need the chart editor anymore you can go ahead and get rid of it and now we have our two graphs so your first graph pressure versus volume of a gas right uh and that will give you let's see if we you know what we could do here we can also do the same thing with uh um with, with this one we can have it start at zero zero so i'm gonna double click get the chart editor up here go to customize then go down to horizontal axis the minimum value starting at zero click in zero there all right and so that kind of gives us a better idea if we'd gotten closer to, to zero i got two um two milliliters, one milliliter, the data point would probably be never getting to zero, would, but would be getting closer and closer. Okay. So it doesn't look like the first data point is right on you know, the, the, the zero. Um, all right. So, but in order to get full credit, you need the title, the uh, label of the y-axis and label of the x-axis and the, the, the points on there. Okay. For this one, Pressure versus one over volume, right? Remember, we uh, figured out what one divided by volume is, and then we graphed those numbers as your x-axis versus the y-axis. And for this one, not only do we need to put the points on there, we need to label the x-axis, the y-axis, uh, give me a uh, title, but also we need the trend line added. You want to use equation like we showed earlier, and then make the um, x-axis the minimum zero. So it goes all the way down to the origin. We can see where the origin is. Okay. And that's what's necessary to get uh, full credit. 